Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. Our panelists are already lined up, so let's convene today's summit. And tonight, joining us from New York City, constitutional lawyer and professor of media law at New York University, Mr. Charles Glaser, also author of the International Libel and Privacy Handbook. Uh, Middle East correspondent, uh, Johan Matthias uh, Sommerstorm, joining us from Istanbul, and Turkey expert at the Jerusalem Institute for Strategy and Security, Dr. Haitan Cohen Yana Rokak, uh, here in our Tel Aviv studio. Thank you, gentlemen, so very much uh, for joining us uh, tonight as our main topic. Turkey and Sweden, once again, at odds is the risk of allowing the burning of the Quran greater than the risk of banning it. Let's take a closer look and pick up the conversation from there. On Saturday, a far-right politician burned a copy of the Quran in front of the Turkish embassy in Stockholm. Before setting fire to the Muslim holy book, Rasmus Paludan gave an hour-long speech against Islam and immigration and called his act a small stand for freedom of expression against Turkey. Sweden approved the protest despite Ankara's appeals, and the reaction was swift. Calling the demonstration vile and Islamophobic, Turkey cancelled the planned visit by Sweden's defence chief. The meeting was meant to dispel Ankara's options to Sweden's NATO bid. The Nordic country applied to join the alliance after Russia's invasion of Ukraine. But political ramifications aside, should the protest have been allowed in the first place? Where does freedom of speech end and hate speech begin? Is freedom of speech absolute? So let's get to it, is freedom of speech Absolute. As always, uh, we begin with our quick fire round, 30 seconds each to let your initial stance on the matter, and we'll pick up the conversation now from there. So, Mr. Glazer, please take the lead. Hi, uh, good evening, all. Um, <clears throat> freedom of speech is not uh, absolute. I think uh, any reasonable person can draw a line. It, it, some things are very obvious uh, uh, child pornography, uh, advertisements for illegal products, things like that. Um, but uh, the expression of an idea is not an action. That's part of the problem that we have here. Mr. Somerstorm, your 30 seconds are on. Thank you so much. I won't give my own opinion now because I'm a journalist and supposed to report about others, but I will tell about the Swedish judiciary system. And uh, no, it's very far uh, reaching. Uh, but it's not absolute. We have certain laws, as you were talking about porn, uh, child pornography, for example, it's not allowed, of course, as, uh, as uh, not even incitement to hate against certain groups, not allowed. So, no, it's far, but it's not absolute. Uh, last but not least, Dr. Yana Rokaka, your take? Well, uh, as an Israeli Jew, I would like to quote uh, the Jewish poet Heinri Heine, where they burn books, in the end, they mm. will er also burn people, human beings. Oh, so, in my opinion, what we have seen in Sweden, unfortunately, is, is a hate crime, and uh, the, the Swedish judiciary legitimized by approving it. Uh, I think they legitimized this uh, horrific act. Okay, and on that note, gentlemen, let's uh, please uh, feel free to interact from this point uh, onwards, and uh, allow me to begin by asking that Swedish authorities make a mistake facilitating this protest. Uh, Mr. Uh, Somerstorm, please begin. Well, I have to say that the Swedish authorities or the Swedish politicians uh, are very well separated from the Swedish judiciary system, which uh, approves these mm -hmm. kind of events in Sweden. So even if the Swedish politician, and I'm sure that they didn't want to see this event outside the Turkish embassy yesterday, uh, they didn't want to see it. But they don't have any say in this. It's the judiciary system uh, who stands alone and give the approval. And uh, it's always been like this. And here is the big uh, collision, you can say, yeah. with Turkey, for example. So, Professor Glaser, uh, you know, Sweden is criticizing the burning of the uh, uh, Quran as a provocation, okay. but defending its decision uh, to allow the plan, uh, uh, right. the planned actor right. to go right. along. So, is it a sort of a situation that if you don't see the bad, you can acknowledge the good type of a, a no, thing? It's, it's, it, it, it takes a little more unpacking than that. I, I think, for first off, the Swedish uh, uh, officials, their comments, I think, were appropriate and responsible. They, they uh, 
uh, decried uh, uh, what was inappropriate, uh, the burning of the Quran, burning books, I'm quoting uh, uh, the Swedish prime minister, burning books that are holy to many is a deeply disrespectful act, and I want to express my sympathy to all Muslims who are offended. Well, that's fine. At the same time, and this is where the unpacking matters, hmm. in Sweden, the constitution guarantees extensive rights to view their public, uh, in public, uh, to view their, their, their things. Incitement to violence or hate speech isn't allowed. We, we all agree on that. So you have a law. The question is, how is that law interpreted? And I don't know that this uh, burning of the Quran, which is disrespectful and it's obnoxious, it's happened here, you know, in the United States and elsewhere. Um, it doesn't seem clear to me that that is an act of violence. And it, it is that that's the problem it is is we are too easily blurring the line between speech. Give me that coat or speech that is really action. Give me that coat or I or will. Or I will, yeah. The, Dr. Anna Rorak, uh, you're, Rorak uh, excuse me. Uh, I want to circle back to uh, my opening question. Is the risk of allowing the burning of the Quran greater than uh, uh, banning it? Well, uh, I, as far as I think, uh, in a broader sense, yes, because the ramifications would be very dangerous for also the public peace. Uh, as we all know, after such an incident, uh, other people, uh, other Muslims, may f may felt offended, may felt attacked, and they may uh, seek to take revenge. So mm. uh, this is uh, very irresponsible. Uh, this uh, Swedish politician must be condemned. He. Must must not get any uh, kind of legitimization from the Swedish authorities, and uh, I think this is really disgraceful, really disgraceful. But, but Paludan uh, stayed, it's not his first rodeo here, uh, this uh, far-right uh, uh, Danish politician who operates in, the, in, in, in Sweden. He is clearly stating that his goal is to create such provocation in order to provoke violence and then say, yeah, you see, I told you so. So it is somewhat counter conducive uh, uh, here on behalf of the uh, of the of the critics question being are extremists taking advantage or or seeking refuge under the auspices of freedom of of speech uh, mr summerstorm uh, well, uh, yes, I, no doubt about it. And I, I mean, this guy, Mr. Paludan, for example, he's a small fish when it comes to being a politician. He's a really, really extreme right-wing politician. In the last election in Sweden, he had like 1,000 voters. That not that is not many in a country where 7 million can go and cast their votes. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he's successful in that way that we are sitting here and talking about him right, right. now. And Mr. Erdogan was talking about him yesterday. And all the world is talking about him now. So, I mean, he knows what he do, what he needs to do to draw attention to himself. But, but Dr. Uh, Jan Roca, is Islamophobia to an extent more tolerable in the sense that there's a double standard when it comes to the Quran? Um, I think... Um, this is really problematic. Uh, we all see that the Swedish politician exploited uh, this prejudice uh, for the uh, immigrants uh, in his own society, and uh, by uh, setting fire the Holy Quran, uh, he he sought to get the support of the people. I think this is totally unacceptable. Professor Glazer. Well, briefly, we have to take a little more historical view. Uh, is there? Uh, forget the double standard question for the moment. But the the key problem here, and with all due respect to uh, my colleague uh, up there, Professor, um, is that uh, we are assuming improperly as a legal matter. We are we are assuming a, a concatenation, a, co a connection between the offensive speech and the action. And what happens is the fear of retribution, and I understand that, the fear of retribution, the fear of violence, the fear of, oh my God, people are going to flip out and set things mm -hmm. on fire, cannot and should not ever be the basis for uh, uh, just blithely banning an obnoxious, clearly I agree, an obnoxious act. Very, very important thing for you to remember, for us to remember. In the uh, turn of the, the 20th century, um, 
the socialists and anarchists in the United States distributed leaflets opposing our involvement in World War I. Mm. They went to jail and they were deported. And uh, it took a long time for jurisprudence to say, wait a minute, wait a minute. You cannot hold a publisher or a journalist or even a protester responsible for the acts of some idiot out there. I mean, this has been proven in many different ways. Perfect example, tragedy in New York. Uh, some mm -hmm. fella, uh, a bad guy, he shoots a police officer and they discover that he was listening to rap music, right? Okay. Kill the police, shoot the yeah. police. And they tried, you know, to sue the record to connect company. connect the dots here, yeah. You can't. You can't do it. But maybe, do it. Um, but maybe Professor Glaser, holy books should be excluded from the freedom of expression protection. Well, to begin with, it, that wouldn't work in the United States and in most countries because of the separation of church and state. And an interesting point here, and this is why I say there's the law and the way it's interpreted. Um, uh, having worked on my book, I, I, I've read the, the Turkish constitution. Uh, and interestingly enough, yeah. um, uh, they, uh, on paper, uh, uh, respect to no one shall be compelled to worship or participate in religious rites, okay. ceremonies, or beliefs. In other words, they claim to be a secular country. Now, we've seen Erdogan for years try to have it both ways. Yeah. You know, but we cannot make a special exception for religious books. Why? That's a slippery slope. These are sacred books because these are sacred, sacred books yeah. and people and people uh, do believe in them. And this is, uh, you know, yeah. very sensitive. This is a very sensitive issue, sensitive. I think. And I but think that there should be a boundary here. for that. I mean, well, uh, yes, I agree, but the boundary can't be you hurt my feelings, you offended me. The fact is, there have been holy books for centuries. And in India, if you criticize the Gita, right, on television, yeah. there, there can be riots. I mean, this is not a unique situation. And, 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 and yet a recurring whole... one, Dr. Yanaroka. I believe, I, I believe that uh, your point of view is very ethnocentric because you are, um, you're, you're judging uh, other cultures <laughs> with, with Western values. Hmm. The, I mean, well, I think yeah, this is the, this is the, you know. this is the problem. I mean, and we are trying to impose I, our Western I, values for the whole yeah, humanity. I, yeah, I, I think, I, I think I this is, this is the I, huge problem in some societies, yeah, burning of Quran or burning of the Old Testament or the New Testament should not be acceptable. I totally believe that this should not be acceptable. We're entitled to that belief, but the fact of the matter is, is that this is not an ethnocentric or Western view. Uh, I, uh, my specialty is international law. I'm basing my yeah. concepts on EC, EC, uh, European Court of Human yeah. Rights decision. Okay, uh, gentlemen, hold your thoughts right there because we do need to take a very short break, but obviously we have so much more to unpack right after it. So Professor Glazer, Mr. Somerstrom, and Dr. Yana Rokaka, you're staying with us a few minutes of a break, and now we're back with the summit. Don't go anywhere. Back to the summit. Uh, still with us, uh, Dr. Hayatan uh, Cohen, uh, Yana Rockak, uh, Mr. Johan uh, Matthias uh, Somerstorm, and Professor Charles Glazer. Thank you, gentlemen, so very much uh, for staying with us. We're also staying on topic. But before we dive back into our conversation, let's take a quick listen uh, to the Turkish foreign minister. Now in Sweden, this madman has insulted our religion Islam and our holy book, the Quran, and has committed such actions before. This is a racist act that is also a hate crime. When we heard this news, we took the necessary steps. We called Sweden's ambassador to Ankara to our ministry yesterday. We made the necessary warning. Our ambassador in Stockholm met directly with the Swedish Foreign Minister, Tobias Bilstrom, and conveyed our thoughts on the matter. No one can call this freedom of thought. Today, they do not allow the burning of another religion's book. But when it comes to the Quran and Islamophobia, they immediately say freedom of expression and freedom of thought. Hate crime and racism are not freedom of thought. It is not according to Swedish law, nor is it according to the decisions of the Council of Europe. 
According to the European Court of Human Rights rulings, hate crime and racism are not freedom of thought and freedom of expression. So before we go back to our debate on uh, the uh, uh, more philosophical uh, elements uh, in this uh, in this uh, story, uh, let's talk uh, news and begin with a quick fire round, 30 seconds each. Is it the end for Sweden's uh, NATO uh, bid? Uh, Mr. Sommerstorm, please take the lead. Well, this is surely problematic for the already much problematic Swedish NATO bid. But I don't think it's the end. Uh, right now, Sweden, uh, Turkey needs this to show that they are strong. They have an election campaign coming up. Uh, uh, Erdogan needs to show that he's a strong man who can lead Turkey. I think Sweden is still in the NATO thoughts because of the geopolitical situation. And it will be maybe member uh, uh, next fall or next winter. Yeah, sometimes you need to expand the problem in order to solve uh, the initial uh, problem. Dr. Jana Rokak? In terms of soccer terminology, I uh, name this Swedish act as an own goal. Mm. I think the Swedish government provided a present for the Turkish government because the Turkish government is suffering from enormous pressure from Russia. And now uh, they had this wonderful excuse uh, to uh, to make it more problematic for the Swedish membership into NATO. Last but not least, uh, Professor Charles Glaser. Uh, well, I think uh, uh, Professor made a very good point there uh, regarding the opportunity uh, f for making political hay out of this incident. Um, it, it, two points are really worth remembering. Uh, this isn't the first time that Erdogan has used uh, uh, Islam or mm -hmm. is or values as some sort of showpiece. When I was last in Turkey, um, he walked out of a basketball game. You might remember the FIBA game because there were cheerleaders, oh my gosh, who were dressed, you know, inappropriately. Yeah. You know, yeah. he, had, he made a big, a big scene out of leaving, you know. So who would have thought religion being utilized for politics? Um, surprise, surprise. Uh, and uh, please uh, let's uh, feel free to interact from this point onward, gentlemen. Um, uh, and I do want us to go back to our earlier conversation. Uh, should a state, any state, and Sweden and Turkey are, are good uh, and somewhat opposing examples here, uh, decide what is and what isn't acceptable speech? Um, Dr. Yana Ropak. Well, uh, this is very problematic because it's not the only uh, burning of Quran. Uh, in the same political environment, we are also witnessing the Kurdish, the pro-Kurdish PKK mm -hmm. protests inside uh, inside Sweden. And according to the European Union, PKK is considered as a terrorist entity. So by providing an approval for these uh, demonstrations, again, uh, the Swedish government in Turkish eyes is making another foul uh, in terms terms of again in soccer terminology so uh, it's not only one only one headache we are seeing two different headaches one it is very much uh, touching to the nerves of the Turkish government because of this ethnicity issue of the the Kurdish issue and the other one is the religious issue but, you know, we also hear a renewed uh, threats uh, on Charlie Hebdo uh, for another satirical uh, character of Prophet uh, Muhammad, this time from Iranian direction. Uh, is hurting one's feelings over religion simply too subjective, Mr. Somerstone? Well, that isn't. An, I mean, everybody would have a different answer on that question, of course. But religion is a very sensitive question not at least in the Middle East or in Turkey, but in Sweden, the most secular country in the world, yeah. actually. Religion <laughs> is not a big thing here. So, I mean, uh, there are so, such a big uh, difference when it comes to the culture, and not at least religion. Professor Glaser, uh, an amused yeah. Professor Glaser. Uh, I am amused, and I think you're quite right. I mean, you're quite right, but... but uh, um, the, the fact of the matter is that uh, until uh, cooler heads prevail, um, people are going to see. Uh, people are going to claim that these kind of quote acts, burning a Quran, burning an American flag, whatever it be, um, are are violent. And both Sweden and Turkey, in their constitution regarding speech, do prohibit uh, inciting offense. A state secrets, yeah. riot or insurrection, but how do you define that? Um, 
it's interesting, and I kind of leave you with this question. In the United States, there was a, a very well-reported uh, contest, Draw Mohammed. Yeah. You remember that? Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and where was Erdogan? Where was he? It didn't affect him. It had nothing to do with him. He didn't. Have, but where was he? When, um, you know, yeah. when the the uh, radicals uh, and I use that word pointedly murdered the journalist said Charlie Hebdo. Where was Erdogan? Where was he? What did he say? Did he march in sympathy with the reporters? But professor, but professor Glazer, <laughs> do you understand the claim that freedom of speech itself is becoming a religion? <clears throat> Um, well, I've, I've, I've been accused of that myself, but I don't, I don't think that's, uh, you, you know, now you're into what is a religion, you know, is climate change a religion? Some people argue it is. Uh, I, I guess that's, that, that's, that's great cocktail discussion, but I don't think it gets us anywhere. Well, where's the booze? Where are the booze? Uh, Mr. Somerstorm, can liberalism and, and religion live side by side? Uh, sorry, can you repeat that? There was a little I, 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 glitch there. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering whether uh, liberalism and religion live side by side. If it lives side by side, uh, well, if, if it, it can, could live, yeah, I, yeah. It's, my, it's my firm belief that it in, in some way, of course it can. I mean, but you, it depends on how you use the, the, the liberalism and how you use the religion. I mean, as we see in Turkey now, we have more and more Islamism in the government, for example, you have more and more rules in the society that is based on religious yeah. rules, for example. Many Turks are so much against this because Turkish is supposed to be a secular country, but it's not anymore if you ask the, the general Turk. Dr. Anaroka, because we're nearing the end of our discussion, are such acts only driving Turkey and other Islamic countries further away from the West? Well, uh, of course, uh, this is creating an alienation. Uh, the uh, the Turks are Muslims, and according to the latest surveys, they are becoming more and more pious Muslims. And whenever they are seeing such incidents uh, that are taking place in the West, of course, it's very problematic. In the short time we have left, uh, Professor Glaser, uh, is it an indication for the mere notion of multiculturalism <clears throat> collapsing? Uh, I, th I think that's going a little too far. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there, the, there is indeed uh, a, the pendulum is swinging away from what some people call woke culture. Um, but uh, the, 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 the door has been opened to yeah. multiculturalism in general. Well, and, and, you yeah. know, I, I, we, we, we are respecting, all of us are learning inch by inch to respect others feelings uh, the clash yeah. of civilizations persist uh, professor charles glaser uh, mr uh, johanna matthias uh, somers and dr hayatan cohen yana thank you gentlemen so very much for your time and insight it has been a pleasure hopefully we'll see you back on the show soon we